Hi guys, this is Kevin for Pixelvert.com. In this video, we're going to be doing a straightforward comparison between Photoshop and the GIMP. This is a long overdue video. We're going to be covering the latest versions of GIMP and Photoshop. And it's important to do this once in a while because the software packages sort of like each evolve in their own way and we want to see what each has to offer. So this is not going to be one against the other, it's going to be more looking at what they have in common and where they're different. So we start off with Photoshop. This has been one of the most successful packages in the world. It is 30 years old. It is used for all kinds of image editing and nowadays you get it as a package which you subscribe to for a month or a year and it comes with Lightroom so you can edit raw images out of camera. You also get photo apps on mobile devices and these all come with the Creative Cloud. There are different plans including the photography plan which is a one terabyte, one twenty dollars a month. There's another photography plan for ten dollars a month. There are some websites that offer you special offers discounts for certain packages sometimes these are pretty good value and if i can find any of these i'll put them in the link in the description gimp is zero cost it is a an image manipulation program it comes with an open source license so you don't have to pay for it you can install it on many many machines and it's been around for about 20 years it allows you to do image manipulation photo editing, you can create original artwork using the digital painting tools, you can do graphic design. It's got more similarities with Photoshop than differences. Sometimes there are differences, for instance, Inkscape is a vector editing program. Inkscape is used to create works that can be edited again and again until they're just right. Photoshop can do this, it can also handle 3D. Blender is an open source package that allows you to handle 3D. So GIMP has got these sister programs that do 3D vector, vector shapes and vector graphics. It doesn't need to do all of this stuff. Photoshop has many of the features that you need for 3D and for vector graphics built in. So it's a lot easier to learn Photoshop because it gives you so many tools to work with. Whilst GIMP is part of a powerful bunch of open source projects there is more learning to the open source projects because you have to master different programs in order to be able to do different things one thing that both photoshop and gimp have in common is that they allow you to install plugins at the adobe exchange you can see tons and tons of plugins for photoshop gimp also has hundreds of plugins available for it but there is no such thing as the Adobe Exchange for GIMP, so it can take a bit of hunting around to find the necessary plugins. Among the plugins that you can get inside of GIMP are the amazing Nick Collection and also the GMIC plugin, which is a really, really fully featured plugin. It allows you to do much of the same stuff that you can do inside of Photoshop. For instance, if I want to do a depth of field blur, that is no problem. Photoshop has many similar features too, but GIMP is generally a bit more sophisticated, but also a little bit more difficult to use. I would say for the most part, the filters inside of GIMP allow you more control, but they, they're not as easy to use as the ones inside of Photoshop. Photoshop, generally speaking, does give you a slightly more professional experience as far as the user interface is concerned. GIMP does a lot, but it doesn't make it easy for you to do that. It's not as easy to handle. The handling is a little bit difficult. But like I say, there are more similarities than differences. GIMP has got a full, full range of tools that you can use to edit the images, a huge number of filters, and with GIMP, you can also edit images using different precisions. So you can go into 8-bit mode, 16. At the moment, I'm working in 32-bit floating point mode using linear light. I can go into perceptual uh, gamma, 
And I can do that without losing any kind of uh, functionality. I can also edit the blend modes, which are very powerful inside of GIMP. Let's go to the top. Maybe change this to screen. As you can see, there are lots of blend modes and the blend modes inside of GIMP, there are more of them. All the blend modes that you find inside of Photoshop, you'll find inside of GIMP but you also find a whole bunch of other blend modes that you don't find inside of Photoshop. And that's one really useful aspect of working inside of GIMP. The blend modes, the precisions that you've got, you've also got color management. All of that makes GIMP an extraordinarily useful package to work with. Photoshop has got one thing that really stands out, which is non-destructive editing. For instance, if I want to change the colors that I'm overlaying on this image, I can just go on ahead and choose a different color to that gradient map, change the opacity. GIMP can do some of these things, but it cannot do them as well as Photoshop. I can apply adjustment layers, change my mind and just change everything. I can also apply a whole bunch of filters that I can turn on and then turn off. It takes a bit of time, but generally speaking, Photoshop is much quicker than GIMP, especially when working with really large images such as this. I think this is a, an image which is about four times larger than what you're seeing on the screen. One of the things where GIMP is superior to Photoshop is that, for instance, I can't apply certain filters to this image, which is why I'm getting a little warning triangle there. The reason for that is that I'm working inside 16 bit mode. If I go back down to eight bit, eight bits per channel, now gets rid of this little warning triangle. And I should be able to apply the filters that I wanted to apply. Now, the strength of Photoshop is that it allows you to work non-destructively so you can go back and do all these kinds of wonderful edits after your original edit and change anything you want. But like I say, some of the modes, especially 16-bit mode, 32-bit mode, do not allow you to work with all the filters that are available. A key strength, again, for Photoshop is that you can work in CMYK mode and lab mode also duotone. So if you want to do printing, those should be much, much easier to do from inside of Photoshop because you've got CMYK and all of that good stuff. GIMP doesn't have those. And that means that it's not necessarily always easy to do printing outside from the GIMP. Another feature that I want to show you inside of Photoshop, which is lacking inside of GIMP, is the select subject. So select subject is an ability that Photoshop has to create selections of features like humans or animals inside of a photograph by just clicking on a button. It uses artificial intelligence to do this and it's extremely quick, very efficient. You can use this technique even if you've got a really slow computer. It creates selections that are almost as good as the selections that a human being could create. So it is extremely clever. And if I hit Q, you can see it's created a really wonderful selection. That was very quick, very easy. GIMP doesn't have artificial intelligence. In fact, I don't know many open source packages that use artificial intelligence. But this is going to be an expanding feature inside of Photoshop. It's going to be something we see more and more inside of Photoshop. So all in all, I will say, even though you're paying more for Photoshop, there are a lot of features, the extra performance, the artificial intelligence, the ability to open raw files inside of Lightroom. And you can also open raw files inside of Camera Raw. And as I've done down here, you can actually apply Camera Raw as a filter to an image that you're editing inside of Photoshop. GIMP has got the ability to open raw files, but it doesn't have this ability to integrate raw files into the layer stack and to allow you to edit them in this way. So again, that's another key strength that Photoshop has. But as you can see, there are a lot of similarities between the packages. Uh, the differences are limited, but they're quite significant. And at the moment, I would say it's still the case that you'll get a slightly more professional experience using Photoshop than using GIMP, but that's just my own point of view. 
If you've got any comments to make, just leave a comment in the comments area. Hit the like button if you enjoy the video and subscribe for more videos. Hope you find some of that useful. If you did, awesome. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye.